Hey, what's going on everyone? How you doing? In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction about Tornado, which is an asynchronous Python framework. There is a misconception that all Python frameworks do the same thing and are under the same umbrella. But in fact, there are three main groups of frameworks in Python. The first is micro frameworks for building small applications, but also they are scalable like Flask, Pyramid, Cherry Pie and Bottle. Others are battery included full stack web app frameworks like Django, Turbo Gears and Cubic Web. And the last category is asynchronous frameworks for WebSockets and concurrent connections like Tornado, Sanic, AIOHttp, and Growler. So, Tornado is an open source framework but also an asynchronous networking library. And it was originally developed for a company called FriendFeed, which was acquired by Facebook recently in 2009. To understand Tornado, we need to know what is it good for. Tornado is ideal for building apps asking for high performance and several thousand concurrent connection users. Also, it can handle 10,000 connections at once. In addition to that, it's non blocking network IO or input output. Asynchronous programming was introduced to Python since Python 3.5 when the AsyncIO library was introduced. And I have a video where I'm explaining what is AsyncIO, check it out if you doubt. And if all of that doesn't make sense to you, let me explain everything very briefly. Before anything, you need to know that asynchronous programming and more specifically async syntax makes your code faster to execute. And async is one way of doing concurrent programming, which means doing many things at once or executing multiple tasks at once, such as read from memory, write to memory, fetch data from server, send HTTP requests and so on. So how does Python achieve multiple tasks at once? Number one, the operating system uses what we call multi-sharing or multitasking. So one way is to run multiple terminal instances, for example, and you can run your server and all of them will work concurrently in the same time. And your operating system takes care of sharing your CPU resources among those terminal instances. Another way of achieving multiple tasks at once is by using threads. And a thread is a line of execution for several instructions, which means that they all share access to common resources. And here the operating system again will intervene to share your CPU resources with those threads. And the last way is asynchronous programming, which what Tornado does. Even though the operating system will not have any role here, we will be able to achieve multiple things at once with asynchronous programming. Let's imagine that you call your childhood friend to tell him, let's hang out. But then he tells you that he is busy and he is at work now and he will finish at 5 p.m. Now there are two scenarios, either to wait him on your couch till 5 p.m. and do nothing, which is a complete waste of time and not logical even. This is synchronous approach. Or to use your time productively doing other stuff till 5 p.m. and this is an asynchronous approach. To be more concrete, asynchronous code means that Python tells the operating system that it has to wait for a slow process, which is denoted by these red cubes. These are the waiting points where the process or that yellow line has to stop to wait for other process to happen. This liberates the CPU resources from the slow process and can go do other stuff until the slow process finishes. In that case, it can move back and forth between process one and process two. Then the operating system will come every now and then to check out if the slow process has finished or not in order to continue the program flow. Exactly like a mother who is cooking meats too. She puts the pan on the stove and turns down the fire hub for slow cooking, but she doesn't sit next to the oven. She goes to do other stuff at home and checks out the pan every now and then to see if it's done or not. And this is exactly how asynchronous programming works. This is the whole trick doing multiple things at the same time. The operating system is moving back and forth between different processes and checks out for slow process. And whenever it sees these red cubes or these slow processes, it will liberate the CPU resources from this particular process and will move to the second one. So here, for example, the task is being executed in that yellow line, but we have a slow process here to finish. It will not sit idly until that process finishes, but it will move to process two. Then it will run it. And again, we have a slow process here. It could be anything. It could be reading from a database, writing a file, reading from a file, playing music, could be anything. And again, it will jump to process one. Then it will run until it will hit another block. But it doesn't wait on that block. It actually moves again to process two. It continues in that yellow line and so on. So to summarize, 
A sync is a way of concurrent programming in which a process releases the CPU during waiting time so the CPU can be free for other ready processes to continue. And I believe that the first language that has ever executed asynchronous programming was C-sharp, then JavaScript in ES7, then Scala and Dart as well. There is asynchronous programming in Dart, not to forget about Golang and GoRoutines. So who can decide what CPU to be shared for this task or that task? We need a maestro to conduct the orchestra of tasks. This maestro is called event loop. The event loop knows exactly what tasks are running and what other tasks waiting. So the loop selects a task from a stack queue to get executed. And if that task needs to wait for something, it will be suspended. Then the loop will go to fetch a second task to be executed, then checks out the first task if it's done or not. If it's done, then it will resume the flow. If not, it will continue selecting tasks and so on and so forth. And let me illustrate the idea through a quick coding example. We're going to use the async IO library. And don't worry, you don't have to pip install it if you're using Python 3.5 and above, then you will have it built in already. So the first thing is to import the async IO library. Then we're going to create an event loop variable to take the async IO library and we'll access a method called get event loop. So essentially we are saying def hello normal function, but before we have a sync code. So we have a sync await. This is called a coroutine or a synchronous function. So what that coroutine does is just printing searching, then CPU is free. So they are just displaying immediately, but we're going to give three seconds to sleep until that we're going to just imagine that this is a slow process. Okay, just like looping over number from one to 1 million, for example. And in this stage, the CPU resources are being freed, are being reallocated to a different process who needs these resources. Okay, until that finishes, and we will print waiting for task one to finish. And again, we're going to imagine that this is just taking some time and sleeping for two seconds, which is the exact time of that slow process. And again, waiting for task two to finish two seconds, and then everything is okay, all tasks are executed, tasks executed and queue is empty. Now, if I'm going to call that function, we will get this message telling us that this is a coroutine object called hello, and is saved in that memory address. And here we're going to use our event loop. So e loop dot a method called run until complete. And we're going to pass our hello function. Now take a look. All right, as expected, waiting three seconds, then two seconds, then two seconds, then the task queue is empty and all tasks are executed. Nothing else is waiting in the queue. Let's be more specific now and talk a little bit about Tornado. So Tornado is divided into four components, a web framework, which is request handler subclass to create web apps, client server side implementation of HTTP, and a synchronous library including IO loop and IO stream. And these two elements are the foundation of HTTP components. And finally, it's a coroutine library, which allows the synchronous code to be written in a better way than chaining many callbacks. But it's preferable to use the Python native coroutine library asyncio instead, as I showed you. In the first two components, the web framework and the client plus server side implementation of HTTP form a full stack alternative to WSGI or web server gateway interface, which is implemented in Flask, for instance. Now let's go ahead and check out the setup and structure of Tornado web application. So you will need to install Tornado via pip install Tornado for Windows users. For Linux or Mac, you will use pip3 install Tornado. And we will have a request handler to create the web application. So this is the first component. The second component is an application object. This is used for routing requests. And finally, we will have a main function to start the server. So enough talking, let's roll up our sleeves and get to coding. So the first thing that you want to do is to check out if Tornado is already installed on your computer or not. So you will use the command pip freeze, and this should display all the packages installed for Python. So T, we don't have Tornado. All right, good. So now it's good time to install Tornado. Install Tornado. All right, good. Now let me actually create a folder. I will call it Tornado. And I will create a file. I will call it hello.py. 
Okay, and let's actually go ahead and open Tornado folder with Visual Studio Code. You're free to use any text editor that you like. All right, so the first thing that we need to do in our hello.py file is to import the main event loop. So we'll say import tornado.io loop. This is the main event loop brought by uh, Tornado. So here, let's just add a comment. Next, I want to import tornado.web. And tornado.web is used for the HTTP request handlers. So in tornado, there is this concept, which is the request handlers. Uh, they are just simple classes and they are used to map the requests to the request handler. So we will have a class and I'm going to show you that in a minute. And inside that class, we will have different functions. These functions are used to execute different requests. Okay, so uh, let's import tornado.web. Okay, we can say that this is to map the requests to requests handlers. And I'm going to leave the code in my GitHub repository and I will leave the link below. You're free to check it out with the comments and just to use it as a reference for you. So these are the two main things that we need to import the IO loop and the web. Now let's try to create a request handler class to map the request. So we'll use the class keyword to create a class, obviously, and I'm going to call it hello handler. So this is going to handle my hello request. And in between parentheses, I need that request handler as an input. So the request handler exists in tornado module inside web and inside web, we will have our request handler class. This is how you can create a request handler. This is just a general class that will have a function and our function will be used to get something. Okay. So self and self keyword is used to indicate that specific object that I want to get. Then whenever that get function is triggered, I want to write on a web page, obviously, hello, tornado. Now, if you have worked with Flask or Pyramid or Django or any other Python framework, you know that we need a route, a route to enter in your web browser in order to render the page or render that HTML page. And in Tornado, we will need an application which will be responsible for the routing system and it will map the requests to different request handlers. So in that main function that we're going to create now, we can include different request handlers, not only hello handler, as I will show you in a few seconds. So let's create a function. We'll call it make app. And this is going to return Tornado dot web dot application. And if you will hover over application, you will find that application is a class, which is a collection of request handlers that create the web application. So we'll open parentheses and square brackets to be ready to take different handlers. So the first handler, uh, and these are going to be different tuples. So we're going to render on a forward slash or just the default trout. We're going to run that hello handler. So this is the only request handler that we have for the moment. I also want to set the debug mode to true for development. And also I want to set the auto reload to true in order to reflect all the changes that we might do in our code to the web page without interrupting the server. And this is pretty much it. The last thing we need to do is to say if name is equal to main, I want to declare a variable and I will assign that variable to make app. Sometimes this is called main or main app, but really doesn't matter the names now. So I'm going to declare that variable called app and I'm going to assign it to make app function. And when we'll start the server by default, Tornado doesn't tell you that connection has been established and server is listening on port whatever or whatever host name is. So I want to print a message to tell us that the connection has been established and um, server is listening on port whatever. Server is listening on port. The default port for Tornado is 8888. You know what? We can make it better. We can declare a variable, we'll call it port. And in the future, if you want to change the port, you can change it through that variable. This is the correct way to do things. And then what I want to do is to take the app and listen on that port. 
All right, and just let's put the F string here for formatting. And I can say listening on local host. And the last thing we need to do is to start the server on the current thread. So tornado.io loop dot io loop dot current thread. So I want to start that current thread. All right, so just have a comment here to start the server on the current thread. It's really difficult to write and talk in the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and run our program, Python hello.py. All right, perfect. So server is listening on localhost on port 8888. So go ahead and open your Google Chrome. And let's run localhost port 8888. And there it is. Hello, tornado. And by the way, I wanted to show you something. Uh, you can run your code like that, or you can just take all of this, cut it, delete all of that. And instead of defining that here, you just can paste that immediately here, the tornado.web.application. All right, and it will do the same thing. So let's save that. And the same thing is still running. So let's check out if we refresh, the page is still being rendered. All right, but I'm not going to do that. I will leave it as it was. Um, you're free to do whatever you want. Of course, you can run your code as you like, you organize it as you like. Um, let's have another class handler, another class, and I will call it post handler. And essentially, it's the same thing. We'll copy that from here. All right. And we'll have another function taking self self dot right. And here instead of just plain text, you can actually write HTML code here. So you can type this is post one, for instance, and you can wrap h1 tag around it. So h1 and let's close h1 tag. Let's save. And we want to add that request handler here below in our main application. So we will copy this. And instead of hello handler, we will say post handler. You can say here, for instance, post, you can just type post, and this post handler will be triggered. If you'll type forward slash post, enter, this is post one, but this is still not HTML page, if you will inspect elements, this is not an HTML page that it's being rendered, let's actually write an HTML page and render it. So to do that, I'm going to create a page home dot HTML. And in the body, I'm going to add h1, h2 and h3 tags with a horizontal line. All right, and let's save that. Let's go back to our hello.py. And let's create a third request handler. So uh, let's just copy that. And we'll call it home handler. And instead of writing, I'm going to render. So we have a method called render. And what we want to render, we want to render our home.html. So if you will save and scroll down, let's copy this handler and let's just type home and change that request handler from post handler to home handler, save that. And if we'll go back to our page and we'll change the route from post to home, now we have welcome tornado, your async framework for Python. Okay. This is the home page for tornado. All right, we can get back to our page. And if you will inspect elements, now we will have a proper HTML file with doc type HTML with language settings, which is English, metadata and everything. All right, perfect. The last example that I want to show you is how to render dynamic content based on different input. So let's create another class. And I'm going to call it weather handler, we're going to check out the weather, if it's more than 20 degrees Celsius, then it's hot. And if less than 20 degrees Celsius, then it's cold. 
So uh, we're going to do the same thing, tornado. Let's copy this, tornado.web.request handler. Then I will need my function, so get self. Now I want to declare a variable called degree, and degree is going to be equal to self dot a method called get argument. Because I will need the degree Celsius as an input from the user. So get argument. Okay, and I will pass inside here degree. And as that degree should be integer, I'm going to parse the whole thing to return an integer. And then I need an output. And the output is going to be equal to hot if the degree is more than 20 degrees Celsius, else it's going to be cold. And let's add a second output, we'll call it drink. So we're going to present a drink according to the weather. So you can have some beer. If the degree is more than 20, otherwise you will need a hot beverage. And this is called ternary operation where if else statement is displayed on one line. Now we want to render an HTML page called weather.html. Let's actually go ahead and create weather.html. And again, in the title, we're going to say welcome tornado. In the body, the same thing as in home.html. And then I want to display the weather for today. So we'll say today is, and whatever is the output depending on the degree. So I'm going to plug that inside double curly braces. And this is very similar to the Django template language and Jinja for Flask. This is Tornado template language. So it's very, very similar. And here I'm going to just plug output and let's give it two breaking lines. And I want also to display whatever drink depending on the weather. All right, so this is simply our page but we need two more arguments, the output and the drink. And again, this is very similar to Flask and Django. So the output here is going to be whatever output to be displayed depending on the degree. And the second argument is going to be drink and drink is equal to whatever drink is being displayed um, depending on the degree. And as both have the same logic, more than 20 degrees, they will be displayed together in a meaningful way. And let's actually add our weather handler here. So weather, and here we will have a new entry or a new route, which is weather. Now, if we'll go to our web page and we will try to access weather and you will run your query for the degree, and let's say today is 24. Today is hot, have some beer. And if you will change the degree, let's say 19, for instance, we'll have a different message. Today is cold, you need hot beverage. Let's change that to 30 degrees, for instance. Today is hot, have some beer. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful to you. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, please also let me know. You can reach me by just dropping a comment or you can send me an email on info at backbrace.com. And by the way, we have our Backbrace Discord server. You're very welcome to come and join us. We discuss different topics. Please don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and colleagues if you liked it. Thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.